Hello, I'm Dr. Riley, and today I want to talk to you about the recent report from the Healthy Babies and Bright Futures that finds heavy metal contamination in baby food. So this is a problem, right? So the purpose of the report was so that way it could bring um, notice to the fact that the baby food that is sold is contaminated with heavy metals. And so that way everybody kind of has the same information. Um, we're gonna go through this report uh, in a little bit of depth. So what did they do? They went to different kinds of stores all around the country. Even they went to one little store here in Alaska and they purchased 168 different kinds of baby food and they sent it to, to labs to find out how much heavy metals uh, were actually inside those kinds of foods. And they actually looked for something called perchlorate as well in some of them. So what did they find? Yeah, so unfortunately, they found of the 168 foods, 148 of them were contaminated uh, with heavy metals, which is, which is bad because it, as far as we know, there's actually no safe amount of heavy metals that someone could actually have. So this is what's happening is we're giving actually these heavy metals to our children. So there, there are basically 15 foods that are responsible for the risk and we're gonna go through those. Um, so what did they find? They found that Gerber, the number one seller of baby food, rarely tests for mercury. And many of them, many of the foods are contaminated with lead and arsenic. Beech nut, um, which is the second highest seller, apparently uh, they don't even test for mercury and many of their ingredients were high in, in lead. Earth's best organic, which it's organic, so it must be good, right? Apparently not. So a lot of them are actually having high lead content and are contaminated. And Happy Family Organics, well, apparently it's a happy family with heavy metals and they're contaminated as well. So the four heavy metals they were looking at are the arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury, and we're going to go through them. But unfortunately, yeah, this is a, this is a, a, a thing, right? That the foods are contaminated with these heavy metals. And, and it's unfortunately in a lot of the processing, they're actually going to be having, even adding more heavy metals to the food. So um, from the uh, consumer reports, they recommend actually trying to buy unprocessed food as much as possible. So the number one source is rice and rice cereal has the most arsenic. And as we're gonna find out, arsenic is the heavy metal that actually affects IQ the most. So this again, just tells us 95% of the foods were contaminated, but some of the foods had more than one heavy metal, right? So four, four heavy metals were found in 26% of the foods. So, you know, this is very upsetting. Only 5% of the foods were not contaminated. So the most common heavy metal found in foods was arsenic. So what can we do? We can actually um, do some simple measures, right? To, to control um, the, the amount of heavy metals that are, are found in our kids. So the first thing we can do is get rid of any kind of rice snacks. We can get rid of any kind of rice uh, teething biscuits or cookies that we're giving the kids. We could switch from rice cereal. We could stop drinking fruit juice and give our kids just plain tap water. And, and unfortunately, there's two vegetables that normally I would consider to be healthy that actually are fairly high in the heavy metals and then that's carrots and sweet potatoes. So what are the fiendish 15, like I call them? They are the 15 foods that they actually find uh, most of the IQ loss. So these are rice dishes and, and basically, you know, any kind of juice and Cheerios and sweet potato, macaroni and cheese, puffs, water, yogurt. So unfortunately you find milk and bottled water on this list and it's because kids drink so much of it. Any little bit of uh, contamination then kind of is multiplied. And arsenic and water is not a joke. They had done a study in Maine where they were able to show 
that, that uh, there was a decrease in IQ by five points comparing kids who had well water that is higher in arsenic compared to other water that was less in arsenic. So if it, the, it was comparing 10 and five parts per billion, and it seemed like, yeah, for every part per billion, the IQ point went down by one. So, and, and as a population, it seems like arsenic is the thing that lowers kids' IQs. It does it four times more than lead does. So what can we do? Well, what we can do is we can prepare the food in a way. So they had done this study and I leave the, the reference here for in chemistry views where they had cooked it, cooked vegetables that were known to have uh, arsenic in it like carrots. And they, what they did is they actually, uh, in this example, I show someone boiling some carrots. And what they did is they boiled the carrots and then removed the water. So the arsenic apparently goes into the water. And then you can actually remove more than half of the arsenic this way. So this seems to be a good way to prepare it. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, sometimes patients have said to me is that they feel like what they'll do is then they'll just switch to brown rice because everyone knows brown rice healthier, right? Not really. When they look at arsenic, brown rice and wild rice actually have more arsenic than regular rice. Um, you know, this is a, this is a problem. And, and, you know, a lot of times people will just buy something organic because they feel like organic must be cleaner. You can't rely on organic either. Organic rice would be contaminated with arsenic because it's not that it, it's not that it's actually um, that there's uh, there that the heavy metals are considered to be pesticides, but it's actually they're in the soil. The soil is contaminated, and this is the problem. It's very hard to get rid of these things out of the soil, or else the baby food manufacturers would have done it already, right? They knew they knew that this was inside the baby food but it's hard, it's hard to get rid of it. It's in the food that you're eating all the time right now, but it's worse when you're a baby, that babies should not be eating these heavy metals. I mean, it's not good for me to be eating it, but it's really not good for a baby to eat it, right? So this is a thing that I've told patients in the past that there's rice and the arsenic and they would come and tell me, oh, no, no, Dr. Riley, you don't have to worry. I know the secret, basmati rice. Yeah, so basmati rice has less arsenic, but there's no such thing as no arsenic rice. So it is, it is a problem. Even if you're buying basmati rice and it was from California in the hinterlands where they never sprayed any arsenic, there's arsenic there, right? So, and there is no safe level of, of arsenic. Now, if you're going to take a chance and be still doing this for your baby, then yeah, basmati rice, cook it in a lot of water, boil off the water, but just, I would say it's probably safer to avoid rice or perhaps to purchase maybe cauliflower rice or something like that. That probably would probably be a little bit of a, a safer option. So when they did this study, they had some advice for people. One of them was to avoid these puffed rice snacks, which I would say that even if you're not worried about heavy metal uh, poisoning, it, it's probably safer to avoid any of these kind of snacks because I don't know if they're so healthy to begin with. But yeah, if you don't, if you avoid the puffed rice snacks, then you're not going to be having heavy metals. But if you're going to have a snack, they recommend certain things, and I would I would agree with it. Why not give some apples. Why don't you give some, some grapes, hard boiled eggs? You're gonna, we're gonna find out later that eggs are actually an antidote to some of these heavy metals. They actually recommend yogurt, but you're gonna find that yogurt is actually on the list of the most contaminated. So probably that's not something that we're gonna be wanting to have a lot. When I went to medical school, they didn't tell me, tell me that you needed to have foods for teething. And yet there's a whole market for foods that are made for kids who are teething. And so certainly they do sell these foods that they, that they think are good for teething. Um, certainly frozen bananas, cold cucumbers that have the skin removed and have no seeds, they are perfectly fine for babies. And uh, they, they talk about freezing washcloths. And certainly, you know, if that was clean, I would say that I have nothing wrong with that if you feel like the baby gets some comfort 
but uh but yeah babies in general don't need food especially for teething right so they, they can have a teething ring like we see in this picture rice cereal yeah we don't really give kids rice cereal anymore that's a thing like usually when you come for your well visit we tell people not to have rice cereal um i have this graph so that way people can see that rice cereal yeah a lot more a lot more uh, arsenic than every other cereal right um, oatmeal is probably the best first choice i mean in general we also uh, avoid some of these wheat based cereals because we want to um, especially in the beginning not expose babies to gluten so usually probably oatmeal is going to be the first cereal of choice um, but you could see that, yeah, as you start adding rice or start adding other grains, you start increasing the amount of uh, contamination. Yeah, so just to reemphasize, rice cereal, not good. Drinks, yeah, so fruit juice, not good, not healthy. So we would prefer that babies actually uh, don't drink fruit juice. They can eat fruit, but stay away from the juice. Yeah, and then vegetables, you know, this is one of those hard things for me to say, but uh, carrots and sweet potatoes, yeah, they're much more likely to be contaminated. And I was trying to look to see why that is, and it's apparently because of the contact with the soil, right? So it's these root vegetables that are the ones that are problematic for being contaminated with these heavy metals. So what you have to do is you have to prepare them like we said, and then to limit the exposure, have a variety, try not to have carrots every day, try not to have sweet potatoes every day, try to make sure that you're having, um, you know, you're keeping track of the uh, different kinds of, of, of root vegetables that you're feeding your kid. And just so you know, it's not just heavy metals, right? That there's actually a lot of other pesticides and other things that you have to be careful that are being um, exposed in or being uh, put into foods. So one of them is glyphosate. So glyphosate you find actually in oats. So you see here, I have a picture of different foods that are known to be contaminated with glyphosate. Um, the Environmental Working Group puts out a list of foods that actually are uh, known to be contaminated and that they recommend for people to buy organic. Um, in this study, uh, if you decide to look at it, you'll see that they actually looked at something called perchlorate, which we know to be hormonally active and yeah, we find it in kids' foods. It's, it's, very, it's very not good. So what's a poor kid going to do? So luckily, it's, it's, it sounds daunting. It sounds like every food that a kid eats is going to be contaminated, but it's actually not that bad, right? So basically, it's this. Uh, meats, in general, good. Fruits, you might have to buy organic but they're naturally lower in heavy metals if you buy them organic. Vegetables that grow above the ground, usually they are gonna be okay, but not leaf, not leafy vegetables. So usually it's the kind of thing that you wanna make sure you wash and peel your vegetables, especially any of the root crops. So here I wanna talk a little bit, this is not in the report, but this is actually something that I think that they should have put in the report is that people who have poor nutrition absorb these heavy metals more. So even baby Yoda knows that eggs are an excellent source of nutrition and they actually have a lot of the nutrients that help to protect you from absorbing a lot of these heavy metals. So um, make sure that your kids are eating a lot of eggs and meat and things like that, right? Iron deficiency, very well known. When we see a kid with high lead, the first thing we do is we screen them for iron deficiency because being iron deficient does something inside your body that actually makes you absorb more lead from your environment. Because it's not just eating the lead, it's actually your body craving iron. And unfortunately, when your body craves iron, it sucks in more lead at the same time. So making sure that your kid has enough iron 
that's actually a good thing to do to protect them from lead. So mercury poisoning is a thing too, right? And unfortunately, one of the highest sources of mercury is going to be seafood, but some of these foods are going to be contaminated with mercury as well. Again, the Environmental Working Group gives a list of foods that are considered to be best bets uh, that are less likely to be contaminated with mercury. And certainly when I go to the store and I want to buy some kind of canned fish, um, it usually will have a section there where it's actually tested to see if it actually has any mercury. And there's actually one brand that actually tests every tuna, for example, to see how much mercury is inside of it. Cadmium is another uh, neurotoxin. And in a study that was done in 2019, they studied 3,000 foods and 65% of them were contaminated with cadmium. And unfortunately, that also is something that affects uh, intelligence and your ability to learn. And, you know, it's, it's upsetting to me because, you know, I see a lot of kids for learning problems what percentage of them are from heavy metal poisoning? We don't know, right? Unfortunately, it is something that it's, it's thought to be irreversible once they get it. So it's better to make sure that kids are not exposed to these heavy metals when they're little. Now I've mentioned the environmental working group a few times and like for a lot of things, there's an app for that. So you can go on the environmentalworkinggroup.org or go into your app store and you can actually look up a lot of things to see, are they contaminated with heavy metals? So by now you're probably thinking, man, I might have to make up some of my, my, my own baby food, right? And yeah, you know, in, in reality, whenever you make your own food, you know what's going inside of it. So your food that you make yourself is much safer in a way than food that someone else makes for you because you know the kind of things that, you, that are going in the food. And certainly you're gonna put more love into the food that you make. But just because you buy something organic, for example, doesn't mean that it's going to be okay, right? So you're going to have to try to make sure that you follow the rules, that you prepare the food in the safest way, that you're following the rules in terms of uh, avoiding heavy metals and remembering that there are certain foods, because they're in contact with the soil, they're going to be much more likely to be contaminated with heavy metals, even if they're organic. So I put in a couple of these lists because it, it, is, a, it is a thing, like it's very daunting, right? So I, I, when, when I put this list, uh, put this video together, I figured that what I would do is I would share with people a list of all the foods that were contaminated, but it's, it's too long. This is, this is just part of it. And you could see it's just, it's too much stuff. So what I would encourage people to do is to go to these websites, if you're, if, if you're not scared off from buying these kind of foods, I would tell you it is actually kind of not useful because if you're hoping that you're gonna find a food that you have in your pantry that is not contaminated with heavy metal poisoning, I would tell you that the only ones that are not contaminated are gonna be fruits because every single one is gonna have rice, wheat, it's gonna have some other kind of vegetable that we know is contaminated. So you can save yourself a lot of time and energy and just try to avoid the foods that are on the list that we've already said, right? But if you want to, you can see how horrible the foods that you've already been purchasing are and um, that you can find them on these, on these two websites. So what is the bottom line? Yeah, so, you know, this is the, this is the deal. If you're gonna be making foods for your own kids, if you're gonna buy organic foods, uh, buy organic foods like uh, that are from the Dirty Dozen, right? An environmental working group puts out foods, they call it the Dirty Dozen, the foods that you must, must buy organic. And then they have the Clean 15 that they usually consider to be that you don't have to buy organic. Meats and eggs are usually considered to be fairly low in heavy metals. Most fish, but you want to go on the environmental working group website and figure out which ones. But you know, normally they'll actually be things like salmon and things like that that are considered to be better. But you know, again, 
You want to check first. Fruit juice, avoid. Vegetables that grow above the ground, they usually are going to be okay as long as they're not the leafy ones. And if they're leafy ones, you're going to have to probably uh, make sure that they're organic. Grains are usually suspect. But uh, for example, if you buy organic oatmeal, that's considered to be lower in glyphosate than regular oatmeal, although it has, again, it, it has contaminants. And then if you know there's a food that it's in the category of more likely to be contaminated, then you just have to eat them less frequently. So instead of sweet potatoes, then you might eat more butternut squash. And I would encourage anybody who has watched this video and now they're kind of mad. Yeah, they're, you know, I would tell your congressperson, get politically active, tell your friend so that way they know. These, these are very horrible kind of things. People should be able to uh, feel safe when they buy a food for their child that they know that it's, it's, it's going to be okay.